Let's do this back. It's the time now. It's uh, quarter past eight, so we're less than 12 hours away from launch. I think we kick off tomorrow about six o'clock. It took until June this year to finally make the 75 available to the public, delayed by BMW worries about quality. Meanwhile, Rover sales continued falling and losses were mounting. This has been described as the last chance saloon. I think there's a lot in that. You know, if they don't crack it with this car, then they're in big, big trouble. It's a really important um, day for us, but it really marks the start of new Rover. Another day, another orchestra, another launch. This time with 75 specially tuned Rover 75 car horns for accompaniment. Music by rock star Dave Stewart and a solo by Vanessa May, the message for the media is about contemporary style. Well, this is Dan McLaren for a News Direct outside uh, Rover's launch today. I'm joined by now by John Saunders, the oh, marketing... Sorry, it's John Saunders. This is Dan McLaren at the launch of Rover's new car at Tower Bridge. I'm joined now by John Saunders, marketing director for Rover Cars. John, how important is this car for Rover? Uh, no one product is critical, but clearly this is very important. This is the first of a new generation of Rovers. Uh, we have a, a product plan that spans the next five years, and this kicks it off. This, this takes us into the future, so it is important. The 75 is Rover's flagship, but BMW wanted Rover for more than one executive car. They bought Rover to expand and stave off the threat of takeover. The job of the 75 is to make Rover a desirable brand once more so they can go on to sell smaller cars in large and profitable numbers. Well, it's already won what car, car of the year award. We're delighted by that. Jim McDonald is the man in the firing line if things go wrong. But he's confident that the wave of interest in the car will generate a sales bonanza. We have about a three-month order bank right now. We have 80,000 interested prospects that we've built up over the past six months. So there's a huge wave of people out there with an enormous interest in the car. Is that only UK or is that...? That's, that's UK. Now that BMW owns Rover, the message is that the quality of the new British car is as good as the cars it makes in Germany. But what BMW has also brought along is the engineering and manufacturing integrity to ensure that the build quality is ever improving and the build quality in the Rover 75 is exceptional. The question is, are you brave enough to take that chance? You know, it wasn't so long ago there was a huge question mark over this company. Do you want to buy a car from a company that's got a question mark over it? From a company that has factories that have question marks over, over them? Uh, from a company that has a workforce that has a question mark over it to some degree? Or do you want to, and, and with a car that, for all we know, May, be, may have fantastic quality a few years down the road or may have indifferent quality as previous Rovers? Or do you want to go for that tried and tested product um, from one of those horribly efficient German companies? If you're asking me as a motoring, in inverted commas, expert, what I'd be doing is waiting a while um, and seeing how it all pans out. This is an executive car. It competes in a sector which is dominated by corporate buyers, the fleets. These are people that do many, many miles. The age spectrum is very broad. It probably goes from 30 to 30 to 70. Um, we will attract people from all those age groups. The company say that they're aiming the car at uh, people who would be buying 3 Series BMWs, Mercedes C-Class, Audi A4s, A6s, whatever. Um, I doubt that personally. I think it's more a, a car for a, a mature buyer, let's put it like that. Um, if there's a 25-year-old estate agent around um, wanting a hot 3 Series BMW, it might be his 50-year-old dad that would prefer this car. When you sit there um, behind the dash, 
you can't you can't take your eyes off the, the gauges. They're beautifully textured. They're like the, at the moment there's a real sort of um, fashion for 20s, 30s watch design, and that's reflected in in the dials. Um, beautiful wood, sumptuous leather. Um, it gives you that pretty unique combination of being both comfortable and involving to drive. When Jim McDonald, their top British executive, resigned from the company. Jim McDonald has been offered um, a very high-level job in the financial services industry. Um, we're not able to say which company it is, um, which is a great career move for him. It's very unfortunate for Rover. Jim is a fantastic guy who has helped turn this company around, and that's the reason why he was headhunted to take that job. The Rover 75 is performing extremely well. It's exceeding our expectations, both in terms of press response and customer response. Jim McDonald is going on the back of that success. It's probably one of the reasons he was recruited, because people have acknowledged that he has helped turn Rover around. But he's at least the fifth senior executive to leave the company in an extraordinary year. The lowest point was probably late last year, early this year, when the decisions were being made as to whether Rover could survive as a viable car company. BMW decided to bite the bullet and maintain investment in Rover, and the 75 is the fruit of that. Now, if the 75 doesn't work, then we're right back to where we were a year ago. BMW start asking the question again, is it worth maintaining this company? It's been a very difficult year, clearly. We've been running out old models and we've been launching new ones. But so far, um, it has been very encouraging. In September, we achieved our best ever market share result of the year, 6%. So it might have been a tough year, but it's becoming a very successful year. And that's before we launch the 25, the 45, and the classic version of the Rover 75. Those models will be launched at next week's Motor Show in London. But once again, the key questions will not be asked about the cars, but about the survival of the company making them. Not only will Rover survive, it will succeed and become one of the premier automotive brands of the BMW Group. And it'll make money for BMW. And in the long term, it will make money for BMW. Unless the car makes a sudden leap in sales, I would be very, very worried. If things have not started to happen by February and March next year, I think they're going to be panicking, seriously panicking.